Have you ever tried adding a stitch pattern to a basic knitted hat, but then couldn't quite figure out how to maintain the stitch pattern while shaping the crown? Well, this video is the first in a series of videos that will answer those questions. I'll be demonstrating different options for shaping the crown of a hat, whether it's a stockinette hat or one with stitch patterns. We'll cover everything from simple shaping that requires no calculation at all to complex crown shaping that involves complex stitch patterns. To start off the series, I'll demonstrate a method that is very simple and works for any hat even those with complex stitch patterns. The decreases for this hat crown are done very quickly. In fact, they're done in just the top uh, one inch of the hat, or if you're working in metric, about two and a, a half centimeters. So let's say you wanted to knit a hat that was eight inches long. You would cast on, you'd do your ribbing however long you wanted, you'd switch to stockinette, and then you'd, you'd continue working on. Once the hat was seven inches long, because remember you wanted an eight inch hat, once it was seven inches long, then you would switch to working the crown decreases. The decrease rounds for this hat crown are worked identically regardless of whether you are working in stockinette or a stitch pattern, whether you are knitting a small hat or a big hat, whether the yarn you're using is very fine or very thick. The, the decrease rounds are all worked exactly the same and there are five of them. Depending on how thick or thin the yarn is that you're using, you may have some plain rounds worked between the first couple of decrease rounds. In order to determine whether or not you're going to need any plain rounds when you work this hat crown, lay a ruler down on your stitch fabric and count the number of stitches you see in a single column that span one inch. If you have five rounds or fewer in one inch or two and a half centimeters, that would be a bulky yarn. You do not need any plain rounds. You're gonna work all five decrease rounds sequentially. If I have somewhere between six and eight rounds in one inch or two and a half centimeters, I am going to need to work a plain round after each of the first decrease rounds. If I have nine rounds or more in one inch or two and a half centimeters, that is a fine yarn and I'll be working two plain rounds after each of the first two decrease rounds. And I will show you how that progression works next. I'm going to use this little circular swatch to demonstrate the hat crown decreases. I've placed a marker to mark the end of round, beginning of round location. So regardless of how thick your yarn is or how thin it is, you're going to work your decrease rounds exactly the same. And the first decrease round is worked by knitting two stitches and then knitting the next two together. You're gonna to knit two stitches, knit the next two together. And you're going to repeat that all the way around the hat until you get back to your marker. If you are working your decreases, knit two, knit two together, knit two, knit two together, all the way around and you start to, and you see the marker, the end of the round marker come up and you have three stitches left or maybe you have one stitch or two stitches left. You don't have four and you can't do knit two, knit two together. It doesn't matter. If you can't do a knit two, knit two together at the end, just knit whatever stitches are remaining. If you are using a bulky weight yarn, you're going to go right on to the second decrease round. If you are using a medium yarn weight, you're going to knit one complete round, all knit stitches. If you're using a fine yarn, you're going to knit two rounds before continuing with the next decrease round. Decrease round number two is to knit one stitch and then knit two together. Knit one stitch and then knit two together. And you're going to repeat that until you get all the way back to the marker. And again, if you don't have the right number of stitches to complete the final repeat, just knit whatever stitches are remaining until you get back to the marker. If you are using a medium weight yarn, you are going to work a plain round after decreased round number two. If you are using a fine yarn weight, you are going to knit two rounds 
after decrease round number two. Okay, so at this point, we have done two full decrease rounds, and if you are working with medium or fine weight, you have also worked some plain rounds after each of those decrease rounds. But now, we're gonna work the rest of the hat crown exactly the same, regardless of what kind of yarn you have. So the instruction is that for decrease, for the next three rounds, you're gonna work knit two together. So you're just gonna keep working knit two together. You don't have to worry about what happens at the end of the round. You can take your marker out and just keep working knit two together, one decrease after the other. You're gonna work knit two together until you're down to just a few stitches. So what does that mean? What counts as just a few stitches? Well, it's the number of stitches that you would have in about an inch or an inch and a half. So for a bulky weight, you're looking for having about four or five stitches remaining. For a medium weight yarn, you're looking at somewhere around six to eight stitches remaining. And for a fine yarn weight, you're looking at about 10 to 12 stitches remaining. The idea is that when you are done with your decreases, you cut your yarn tail and you run it through the live stitches and pull it tight like a drawstring, that there are a small enough number of stitches that you're really gonna close up that hole. If you have too many left for however thick your yarn is, the hole might not wanna close up as much as it would as if you got down to a smaller number. So that range of four to five for a bulky weight, six to eight for a medium weight, and 10 to 12 for fine yarn should be enough. It doesn't have to be exact, but get close to that. Um, and then you can fasten off the top of the hat. One of the really nice things about this particular method of shaping the crown is that if you are working with a stitch pattern, it gives you a larger canvas to work with. And if you are working with a complex stitch pattern, uh, it it alleviates the issue of trying to shape the crown while maintaining the stitch pattern like you would if you were knitting a, lar a longer hat crown. If you are working with a pretty simple stitch pattern that's only a few rounds long before it repeats, then you can treat that basically like if a stockinette hat. You cast on for your ribbing, work the ribbing however long you want it to be, switch to your stitch pattern and then knit until you have about an inch left in the length that you would like. Now, if for some reason you are at a place in this very short stitch pattern where you really feel like you wanna work another round or two to, to finish off the repeat, you can do that. An extra round or two is gonna add very little to the length. And so it's not gonna really um, create a problem for you in terms of shaping the crown and ending up with a hat that fits you correctly. But these hats here have really long repeats. This one has a 10 row repeat and this one has a 16 row repeat. So for this kind of situation, you wanna do a little bit more planning to make sure that you're laying out the stitch pattern in a way that works with some symmetry or just so that it's balanced well from top to bottom so that you're ending at a place that you want to end. And in that case, you need to kind of figure out ahead of time how many uh, rows you need to work for your ribbing in order to make the stitch pattern work out. So I'm gonna show you what I did for this particular pattern. The crown, as we mentioned before, is one inch long and I want the hat to be eight inches long in total. So that means that the body and the ribbing together are going to be seven inches in length. When I did my, my swatch uh, in the yarn that I was going to use, I discovered that I was getting seven and a half rounds per inch. So that means that the total number of rounds I have for the ribbing and the hat body, it's 52.5. So somewhere between 52 or three would work out for me. The stitch pattern I'm working with has a 16 row repeat. So when you are working repeats like this over and over again, you don't have to start the first repeat on row one of the chart and you don't have to end the last, P, the last repeat on row 16 of the chart. You have some latitude for where that might be. When I look at this stitch pattern, I can see one place that 
could potentially work as an alternative starting point. So if I wanted to start the pattern, I could start it with this straight part right here uh, and then do all of the repeats. However, I decide to start it after I'm doing my repeats, I could decide to end it right here where I have these little points. So I'm thinking about my hat and I'd really like to have this part right here be at the very top of the hat. So if I lay this out, so this is the repeat if I start it with the straightaway part and then I have the pointy part right here. And if I do that, um, then I would need three repeats in order to end with that part at the top. And that is going to take 48 rounds to do three full repeats if I started it with that straightaway part. Another option though would be to start the chart like it's shown and do two repeats of that and then end with that pointy part. So I'm going to be working two full repeats and then working the first six rounds again so that I can end with the pointy part. So let's look at how that would work out in the hat. So if I work two repeats plus six rounds, that is uh, 38 rounds, that would leave me 14 to 15 rounds uh, for the ribbing. If I use three repeats of the pattern, that would, give, would take 48 rounds. That would only leave me with four to five rounds available for ribbing. And that is really too narrow a ribbing for what I would like personally. So my choice is to go with the two repeats plus the six rounds. Doesn't mean it wouldn't have worked to, to do more uh, down here and have a narrower a ribbing. It's just those were my options and that was the decision process that I went through um, in order to plan out my hat. I'll leave the written instructions for working the crown decreases down in the video description. If you're interested in charting out stitch patterns in order to plan for a hat using this type of crown decrease, there are a couple of options. One is to use graph paper and pencil. Another is to chart out the stitch pattern in a spreadsheet using one cell for each stitch. This can work really well for color work charts as well as simple texture patterns. You can also use software to chart stitch patterns. The charts I made for this video were created using Stitch Mastery. It works on both Windows and Apple machines and you can try it out for free using the demo version of the program on their website. Finally, another option is a web-based application called Stitch Fiddle. There are both free and paid versions of this app. I will leave information down in the video description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time with another method of working the crown of a hat.